some Viking music, don't it? <laughs> yeah, gotta get it out the mud, that's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Being through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door, better kick that again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go, gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go, let's go. Shoot. Lights out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing today on this Thursday, January 11, 2024? I am here to play make his head. You know, a lot of news is happening in sports right now. You know, Pete Carroll out in Seattle, Nick Saban retiring. Bill Belichick, the big news of the day, is out in New England. Football is taking over, but basketball has been sneaky, especially college basketball. So right here on this short additional shooting lights out, I had to get this in real quick because college basketball in the last two days has went ballistic, okay? Let's go. Let's get right into it because the men's college basketball, oh, my goodness. I have no idea what these – Past 24 hours was like from Tuesday night to last night. It's been ridiculous, okay? So let's, let's, let's talk about how ridiculous it is, okay? This is your top 10 list, okay? Purdue 1, Houston 2, Kansas 3, UConn 4, Tennessee 5, Kentucky 6, North Carolina 7, Arizona 8, Oklahoma 9, and, I, and Illinois is 10. Four of the top five teams got upset. Within this 24 hour period, five of the top 10 got upset within this 24 period. And every last one of them were on the road, ladies and gentlemen. So, look, it's been crazy as it is as a race. But as of right now, let's get right into it. It's Tuesday night. Number one, Purdue traveled to Nebraska, got caught. Number two, the Utah Cougars traveled to Ames, Iowa to take on the Cyclones. Got caught. Oh, and by the way, did I did I forget to mention that all these upset was by unranked teams at that? Heard you, number one in Nebraska. Took down 88 to 72, a 16 point loss by the number one team in the country. Zach Eady, you know, the player of the year last year, favorite to win player of the year this year. 15 points on six for 10 shooting, seven rebounds, one assist, and two blocks. Where were you? Where, where were you Tuesday night, Zach? Where were you? It's not the typical Zach Eady performance that we are known and accustomed to when it comes to Purdue. Taken down by unranked Nebraska. Wow. One domino falls. That's number one, that's the number one team in the country. Number one team in the country. Don't worry. Number two going a bit. No. See, look at this. Nebraska shot 51% from the field, 61% from three, and 84% from the line. That's a very good recipe of putting off an upset. You can shoot 50% from the field, you can shoot 61% from three, and 80% and 84% from the from the free throw line from the charity strike. Oh yeah, you 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 doing something, okay? You 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 doing something. Purdue on it out round and re, out rebounded. Nebraska only by four. The assist game was in Nebraska favor. Okay. Nine steals for Nebraska. 18 points off the turnover for Nebraska. Nebraska had the business at home. Surprisingly, over the number one team in the country. The number one team in the land. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't handle Nebraska. Lost by 16. Good gracious. Don't worry. Number two will step in. At wrong, the Houston Cougs, the last unbeaten team in the land, they went to Ains, Iowa to take on the Iowa State Cyclones, and they got caught. 57 to 53. First loss of the season for the Cougars, like I said earlier, was the last remaining unbeaten team in the country. No longer. So there's no more unbeaten teams in college basketball for the men's side. And you see Kyle Sanson just – Disgusted, disappointed. You know he's disappointed at. Despite the fact that uh the Cyclones of Iowa State shot 81 
almost 82 percent from the charity strike and the Cougars of Houston only shot 67 percent from the charity strike 10 more free throws attempts and made by the Cyclones the Cougars never never led in this game the Houston Cougars the number two team in the land the final unbeaten team to, to fall never led in Ames Iowa the Cyclones jumped on them from start to finish Good gracious. Jumped on them from start to finish. That's 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 painful because Cougar shot 38% from the field. Iowa State shot 38.3% from the field. No much difference there. Three pointers, 27% for the Cougars, 20% for the Cyclones. No much difference there. We talked about the free throws. The rebounding. A's go to the Cougars 32 to 25. Assists, Cyclones got it by six, 14 to 8. Stills was even about seven to eight in favor of the Cougars. Houston had five blocks. Iowa State had none. But yet, we see all this, and the Cougars never led. They had one lead in this entire game on Tuesday. That's crazy. So, Tuesday was a hell of a night in college basketball. Number one and number two both got dropped. Show you again. Number one dropped. Number two dropped. Both by honor rank teams in the same night. If I remember correct, I think ESPN said it was the eighth. Uh, this is like the sixth or eighth time. And this in in the cut in the college in the AP poll era, where one and two both lost in the same day and on the road. That usually doesn't usually one wins, the other one wins, or they both win. Both of them losing? Don't happen that much. This is like the six or eight time. This is has happened in the game of college basketball. And that was Tuesday night. Okay. <laughs> but the craziness wasn't done. Because let's go to Wednesday last night. Number three, Kansas was at UCF. Dropped. Number five, Tennessee, there was at Mississippi State, dropped. And number nine, Oklahoma was at TCU, dropped. Boy, I tell you, number three team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks, went down to Orlando, Florida to take on the UCF Knights. So welcome to the Big 12 by Kansas Jayhawks. And the Kansas Jayhawks suffered their second loss of the season. Not only did they lose their second loss of the season, they blew a 16 point lead. Wow. Outscored 36 to 23 in the second half. Bill Self is not pleased. I mean, look at it. Kansas shot 51% from the field to the Knights 42. The Jayhawks showed 33% from three, 35% for the Knights, and then the free throw battle. 77, almost 78 for the Knights, and 55% from the Kansas shooting 55% from the charity straight. Oh, you know Bill Self and had them shooting a thousand free throws before their next game. 55% from the charity straight? That's not a Bill Self coach team that I know. I don't know about y'all. When it comes to Bill Self and Kansas Jayhawk basketball, oh, they gonna know how to shoot free throws. Good Lord. 55. Six for 11 from the strike. Six for 11. And you had a 16 point lead. A 16 point lead. And you blew it. And you lost. 16 point lead. A 16 point lead to a five point loss. That is a. And the largest lead UCF had was a twenty was a seven point lead. So you're talking a twenty two point turnaround from largest lead for Kansas to the largest lead of UCF. That is a no twenty three point turnaround. Sixteen point lead to a seven point deficit. A twenty three point turnaround by the Kansas Jayhawks, and they losing their, their second loss of the season to honor UCF. Congratulations to UCF, man. You got the 10th run of the season. Congratulations. 
You're in the double digits of wins now. Got a big win over number three. That's that's very good on your resume. By the way, all these wins by these honorary teams helps their resume. Nebraska can say they beat number one in the land. Uh, Iowa State can say they beat number two in the land. UCF say they can beat number three in the land. Oh, and by the way, the last two games I discovered, Kansas losing and Houston losing, both in the Big 12. So two of the three games I discovered was in the Big 12. The Big 12 is saying not to be an interesting conference. Then from the Big 12 to my conference, which is the SEC, because number five, Tennessee went on the road to start spilling Mississippi, and the Blood Owls of the Mississippi State took down number five, 77 to 72. Mm-mm-mm. That second half is ridiculous. 92 points scored in the second half. 92 points. That is ridiculous. Tennessee dropped 50. In the second half, and it wasn't enough for it. If you can score 50 and a half and you still lose, that's a lot to be said about that other team. Because they Tennessee dropped 50 in the second half and still lost by five. Free throws. Something about free throws on the road, but look at this. 60, 62 and a half percent for the volunteers while the Bulldogs shot. 70 about 70 and a half percent from the charity strike. Nine more free throws made by the Bulldogs than the volunteers. I mean, the Bulldogs shot 50 percent from the field, Tennessee shot damn near 46 from the field. Man, Tennessee largely was three, while the Bulldogs largely was 15. But free throws, man, free throws. Let me see here. This is the fourth game I have covered, and is this the four game of cover? And we're talking about NEM. We're talking about Nebraska shooting 51, 61, and 84% from the charity strike, while Purdue shot 73 from the charity strike. Houston, we talking 80, almost 82% for the Cyclones to 67 for the Cougars. That's two games, right? That we're talking about free throws. Kansas shot 55% from the charity strike. UCF shot almost 78% from the charity strike. That's three games right there. Game four, we're looking at 62.5 for the Volunteers to 70.5 for the Bulldogs. Free throws, man. Free throws. The ranked team is struggling at the charity strike on the road. This is incredible. The charity strike is playing a role in these upsets. The charity strike. Now, you know what that means when we get down to March Madness. We always say free throws prove vital in those tournament games. They're going to be vital in the last two days. Tuesday and Wednesday, free throws. Playing a part in upsets. Oh, my gosh. And then we have one more upsets. From the SEC back to the Big 12. The third upset in the top 10 involving a Big 12 team. Number nine, Oklahoma, was in Fort Worth, Texas, to take on the TCU Horned Frogs. Oklahoma, you deserve to lose because of the simple fact that TCU can score 40 and both have the man that you lose that game. Y'all gave up 40 in the first half to be down six, and you gave up 40 in the second half, and you lost by three, which totals the nine-point loss that you got 80 to 71. Where's the defense in in and Norman, Oklahoma, where's the defense at? You gave up 40 and both half the TCU. 40. What is going on here? Let's look at the numbers. This one, we have to worry about the free throws on this one. Oklahoma, close to 71%. TCU, 77%. Not too much of a discrepancy there. Plus five for the Horn Frogs in that department. Oklahoma shot better from the field than TCU, 40 45% to 44%. Three-point battles really even. 29 for TCU, 28 for uh, Oklahoma, which means y'all three-point games are terrible. Y'all combined 14 for 49. 14 for 49 combined three points. That is abysmal shooting from the outside. And yet, now say all of this and to say TCU actually had a lead by 17. TCU was literally up by 17 at one point in this game. Why? 25 points off for 14 turnovers by the Oklahoma Sooners. TCU got 25 points off of 14 Oklahoma turnovers. 
Another thing that you have to do when you're on the road is make your free throws and protect the goddamn ball. Take care of the freaking basketball. Oklahoma didn't do that. 14 turnovers. Five assumptions turned into 25 points for the TCU on frogs. That is terrible by Oklahoma. You did fairly well in the free throw department, unlike the under four teams, but you couldn't take care of the ball. Man, oh man, the 24 hours in college basketball has been ridiculous. Four top five teams upset it, five top 10 teams upset. What is going to happen? Because look here. What, we put UConn back at number one now? Move Kentucky up to number two. North Carolina three. Arizona to four. Illinois to five. What we do? Because Purdue suffered their second loss of the season. Houston suffered their first loss of the season. Kansas suffered their second loss of the season. Tennessee suffered their fourth loss of the season. And Oklahoma suffered their second loss of the season. All to honorary teams on the road. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? I have no idea. But man, it is only January. We are we are only eleven days in into the new year, and we have top five and top ten teams getting knocked off on the road by unranked teams left and right. If anything else, if if we have any more upsets happening today, good lord, it's gonna be a crazy forensic week. Especially when the new polls come out. Matter of fact, while I'm sitting here doing this, take this down real quickly. Let's see if there's any good games to look at tonight. That might pique interest to see if this upset train is going to continue to roll into a third consecutive night. Because, man, four in the top five, five in the top ten, good Lord. We are into Thursday. The only top ten game that we have is Michigan State at Illinois. Number ten is hosting Michigan State. If Tom Enzo walks into, I want to say, Champaign, Illinois, the knockoff, the final line, good gracious, it's going to be on. And pop. And then Friday, what we got going on Friday? Nothing going on Friday. So if Mississippi State pulls this one out tonight, three consecutive nights of a top 10 team getting knocked off. The first one to be at home if Mississippi State, if Michigan State can do that. Outside of that, got to wait to Saturday. Syracuse is at North Carolina, Tennessee is at Georgia. We got two of the team, two of the teams that got upset that I talked about. Kansas and Oklahoma doing better in Kansas. Kentucky's at Texas AM. Purdue is at home hosting Penn State. Houston is in TCU. Arizona is at Washington State. And that's all Saturday. So this this crazy week ain't done yet. We got tonight with Michigan State going to Illinois. And then we got a boatload of top ten of, of top ten teams in action on Saturday. So we are already at five. By the time we get to the next poll, which is, I believe, Monday, we could, could we have more upset. And then I forgot Sunday. Maryland is at Illinois and Georgetown is at UConn. So we shall see. But hey, want to jump on here real quick, give you a quick shooting the lights out episode because college basketball has gone bananas. So but that being said, the playmaker here signing off. Catch y'all later to talk more basketball. Good. You've done great. But you can't stop here. You can't stop now. You gotta keep going. Through all your trials and your tribulations, you gotta keep pushing. Now, finish your camp. Yeah, gotta get it out the mud. That's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Been through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door. Better kick it again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go. Gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. If you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and a whole lot more. This has been Shooting the Lights Out. Masterpiece.